What's up everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Sebastian and last week I published a video about the Sam Calder drawing Luma Fade transition effect, which I will link up here. And a lot of you guys seem to like that effect, so they reached out to me and asked if I can do some sort of normal Luma Keyer transition with some sort of special effects. So there you go, let's hop into DaVinci Resolve and show you how you can recreate this. <laughs> So guys, as you see, we're in the edit page. I got two random clips. This one is a stock footage clip, which I've downloaded from Paxels. And this Trinidad and Tobago clip is from another YouTuber called TriniWeeks. He's amazing at drone videography and drone clips from his country, Trinidad and Tobago. So if you want, go check him out. The content and the drone clips he's taking are incredible. So with that being said, the first step is determine how long the transition should be. So let's make this transition go for two seconds and 10 frames. So right now, let them overlap like this, cut them, actually turn them around so that the boat clip is on top of the clip that we wanna to transition to. So with that being done, this time we're going to the color page, not the fusion page. So go to the color page. So the first step is if you don't see this timeline, and you have to check timeline up in the right corner and there you see the clip on top and the clip on the bottom. So right now the first step that we want to do is right click and add an alpha output and now connect the alpha channel from this boat clip to the alpha output. So now once we've created this alpha output go to the keyframe section which is left to your scopes and just check this. Then add a keyframe on character one. So now there are two ways to create a luma fade. You either drag this dark part up, which will key out the dark parts from the image first, like that, all the water will be gone. And you can see the boat and the waves still in the second image. And the second way is to key out the bright parts first. So in this case, it's the waves and the boat. So now drag this bright part down and you see this will key out the waves first. But this image has a lot more darker parts than it has bright parts. So we're actually using the dark part key out first. So let's add a keyframe on corrector one and then go to low soft and drag this up to around 10. So now from there, go forward a few frames right there and then drag this dark part and drag this in something around there go forward a few frames again keep dragging this in go forward another few frames drag this in even more and now you see the keying starts let's drag this down just a little bit more go forward a few frames drag this down even more and now go almost all the way to the end and completely drag this out. So once we've done that, we basically just finished our Luma keying. So we can go back to the edit page and this is the Luma key that we've created so far. The next step is to highlight both, right click and create a new fusion clip. So with this fusion clip selected, go to the fusion page. But guys, just a quick little reminder, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe to not miss out on any upcoming DaVinci Resolve content. So with that being said, let's go back into Fusion. And there we see our media in one. So go to media in one and hit one on your keyboard. Go to media in two and hit two on your keyboard. So you can see what those images are. So what we're gonna do first to stay organized is rename them. So go to media in one and hit F2 on your keyboard and probably name this beach and then go to media in two and rename this as well and just type this boat. So from there, all we gotta do, since we want this image or the output to be kind of wavy. So go to the boat clip, hit shift spacebar and search for this place. Then click add. Make sure to use the normal displays, not the 3D one. And in the displays node, we can change our offset, refraction strength, and spread. We're not gonna touch anything of that yet. Instead, we are going to go 
hit the background node and right hit the background is a fast noise node. So let's drag this in and just connect the output of the fast noise to the displace node. So now bring up the fast noise on our first window, just press one. And now you can see that this is some kind of fog. So go to frame 26. Our transition is starting at frame 29, as we can see right there are a few parts of the other image coming through. So let's go to frame 26, go to spread and keyframe spread and just leave it as is. Go forward one frame and pull up the spread just a bit and go to somewhere where the transition ends, maybe around 50. 48 is good. And then just bring this back down. So then go to the fast noise node, go to frame 26 and add a keyframe on detail, contrast, brightness and seeth rate. So then go forward one frame and then bring up the detail just a little bit, the contrast a little bit and the brightness, bring it down. So now then go to the C thread and bring this up just a little bit and then go to frame 40. Bring the C thread up even more to around 0 0.1 and then go to frame 50 and bring the C thread all the way down but also our brightness, reset this, our contrast and the detail. So now that we've done that, copy the fast noise and the displace node, control copy and control V to paste them. And now connect your beach node to the displace 1.1 and the displace 1.1 to the merge one. So because we copied fast noise one and displace one, we got the same keyframes in fast noise one underscore one and in displace one underscore one. As you can see right there. I got the exact same keyframes. So now go to fast noise 1.1 and increase the C thread. And you can see how your image starts to kind of wobble like it's like it would be water. Increase the C thread just a little bit and then go to 50 and leave it at zero. So once this is done, we're pretty much finished with this transition effect. So let's come back, right click and check the render cage output on on. So now as this is completely rendered, let's just watch it back. So you see this has some kind of watering effect and we can enhance this effect by using some sort of sound effects. Let's just drag in these sound effects. So now those are some water sound effects. Let's drag the volume down. And from that as well. And then you get something that looks like this. So guys, that is all I got for today. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you got value out of it, please make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. But also, as I promised, here is a quick little teaser of what effect we're recreating on Tuesday. So make sure to tune in. Have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.